church say amen. amen. Thank you for your patience. Shall we stand for the opening hymn?
want you to note for the scripture, Matthew, the third chapter. Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. And then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruit meet for repentance, and think not to say, Within yourselves we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize, baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus unto Galilee, to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of, of him and John. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it be cometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he had baptized, uh, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Here we have the, the, the incident of John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ also a relative, a cousin of Jesus Christ, and it is here uh, that we find uh, that uh, the master uh, comes to the baptism of, of John the Baptist, and there in the crowd are the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, who, who are there as onlookers and criticizers of what was going on and to see what was going on. And John the Baptist calls them out by saying, O generation of vipers. He calls them snakes, uh, which is quite bold for him to call them out uh, in their hypocrisy. And in the midst of uh, John's baptism, he tells them uh, in so many words that he is not the promised Messiah, but there is coming one uh, who uh, will be the Savior of the world, or the Christ. And when he comes, he would baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Of course, fire refers to the ultimate destruction of rejection of one's faith and belief in the one who will come, in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus shows up and is standing on the shores. And as John looks up, his eyes 
sees this tall Jew standing in the crowd. And Jesus begins to move from the banks to the water. And as he does so, John begins to shout at him, telling him not to come in the water, for he felt that he was unworthy to baptize the Messiah. And Jesus calms his fears by saying, suffer it to be. In other words, let it be just as it is, because it must be. And Jesus went down in the water. And as he was baptized, as our example, as the new federal head of all creation, as the new Adam, and as he became an example that we too must follow and should follow. I might add that water baptism does not save you, but it is a public profession of your belief and faith in Jesus Christ. The reason why we baptize is that the person whom we are baptizing has made a public profession by coming forward with their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. I might add that regardless of how long you have been a Christian, you and your faith would not be on the same level as these children. But yet their faith and their belief is recognized by God. Because when we started out, we didn't know as much as we know now. But we have grown in our faith. And all of us are growing. I am growing. We all are growing in our faith. And they too will grow more and more step by step, level by level. And the Bible says that, the, that heaven endorsed the baptism of Jesus by the Father making a public announcement and the Holy Spirit descending upon him in the form of a dove. And the Father said, this is my beloved son. In other words, he said, this is, in the Greek it is, this is the monogone, the unique son of God. All of us are sons of God. But Jesus is the unique son of God. And then he said, in whom I am well pleased. The argument has been down through the centuries that how can it be that there's such a thing as the Trinity? Here it is in the text. You have the Son in the water. You have God the Father speaking on the loudspeaker of heaven. And then you have the Holy Spirit in the likeness of a dove. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The scripture bears witness that there is such a thing as the Holy Trinity. Shall we pray? Oh God, we come before you today to celebrate these two candidates. And in their faith in you, we are grateful. We are grateful for the homes in which they have come. The parents, the relatives that will be impacted by their faith. And we pray that the family's lives will be strengthened and transformed by their walk with you. You said in your word, and a child shall lead them. These children, we believe, will lead others in their family to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pray that this day will be a great day for them and a great day for their parents and their family to rejoice yes. in knowing you and being baptized in your name.
we're thankful to you for. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. This morning to have in the water Jameson Thomas at the age of 10. Amen. 10 is a good number, don't you think? And we are grateful for him coming on the profession of his faith. Obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the great head of the church. Oh, obedience, obedience to the great head of the church. We baptize our brother upon the profession of his faith that he has in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, obedience. We baptize him in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody, somebody said getting a baptism in, in the church is like taking a bath in front of everybody. Amen. I want to make a disclaimer that I, I had a little practice with these names before I got up here. Amen. With the second go round. The number going up, we started at 10, and now we're up to number 11. Amen. This is Jorian Kennedy. Amen. And we thank God for him coming on this day. Amen. He must be special because we waited around until he got here. Amen. Obedience. Oh, obedience to the great head of the church. Oh, obedience, we baptize our brother upon the profession of his faith 
that he has in the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't baptize him in the name of the President of these United States. We don't baptize him in the name of the Mayor of Greenville. But we baptize him in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time just thanking you, dear God, for the two candidates we just brought into your fold. Dear God, we pray that their walk with you will be obedient. It will be an obedient walk knowing that they have a long time to walk. And Heavenly Father, we ask that we as Christian men and women and members in the same fold, that we will hold their hands and be with them while they're walking. That our light will shine for them to see as their light shine for this world to see, knowing that you are our God, and without you, there is no other. We pray, Heavenly Father, for their family, for their parents and grandparents, that they will be instrumental in this walk, this Christian walk. And we pray, dear God, that they understand that it's not just a walk. Dear God, we, 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 we pray that they understand that there's work in this walk. And the work is the work of your church. Heavenly Father, we pray that they work while it is day. Because when it's night, no man can work. Let them work while they're young, knowing that the vineyard, there is a vineyard. And we are looking for workers. We're not looking for people who just want to come and get paid to work. Dear God, we're looking for folks that want to work for you. And at the end, they will receive their crown. That crown that you see they putting on people's head now is not your crown. Dear God, we pray that they spend their time working and understanding that at the end, they will receive their pain. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day that we have. Thank you for everything that's, that's going to happen in their lives. And dear God, we pray that you continue to bless us individually as well as collectively. This is my prayer. I pray in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Amen. Give me a song, child. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. I say, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear, and may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Church, y'all hear me sing that if y'all know that. Say, I love you, Lord, and I live. my 
See how quiet y'all got right there? Amen, amen. I'm so, I am so very grateful, amen. Now, uh, we know Tuesday is the big day for voting, and uh, you should go and cast your vote uh, to uh, the candidate of your choice, amen. And I believe you will do the right thing that you will make an intelligent choice. Amen. Because you are aware of the issues and you are aware of the challenges that we face here in Mississippi and especially in the Mississippi Delta. Now, there is a person that you'll see their name listed on the ballot as an independent, but they are really not running Drawn, but their name is listed and they have thrown their support uh, behind uh, Mr. Presley who was 
with us the other Sunday. They have thrown their support behind him. So don't waste your vote uh, on that person. Amen. Because they are not running. Their name is on it, but they are not, they are not running. Amen. Now, so on Tuesday, we will not meet for Bible study. Uh, but we uh, want you to have the time that you need to go uh, and cast your vote and pray for the outcome. On Thursday, we would like to see the official staff at 6 o'clock uh, for a, a, a board meeting. Amen. Please, sir, please, ma'am, please uh, come to uh, the board meeting at at 6 o'clock. Amen. And we will not be there uh, very, very, very long. Amen. Uh, and now, I want to tell you that we're going to have some interruption with our Bible study uh, because the following week I will be in Gulfport for the fall session. And I am uh, slated to give the closing message uh, at the convention, amen. And um, uh, President Buckley reached out to me and asked me if I would bring the closing message. It's a two-day conference uh, and uh, Therefore, uh, even on that Tuesday, we will not be in session, for I will be uh, in, in Gulfport. Amen. So I pray that you will be praying for me, yours, yours truly, that it would be a great session, and that the Lord would bless the closing message that I am to bring. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, and the God forever keep you. Let us keep our prayers going for all of our members and all the persons that are uh, in need uh, of a special touch from the Lord. Amen. All right. Now let's have our offering, and then after the offering, we'll uh, get back to fellowship in our, our candidates in. Amen. All right, ushers, come now with the offering.
excited whenever we have a baptismal service because it means that the Lord is adding to his church. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm grateful that David was, was, was here with you to present the gospel message and we're grateful that these two accepted Christ uh, in the absence of the pastor. Amen. Amen. And it's always good to just keep things moving, don't you know? Amen. 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 So we rejoice in this in this great hour. Amen. All right, Kennedys, where you stand. Amen. The first certificate of baptism is a this certificate is what you can can have as a record to remind you of your decision to accept Christ and to follow Christ. This is, is the greatest day in your life. Amen. There will be other days that will be great. But this is the greatest day to give and to accept Jesus as your Savior. The first certificate is given to Jameson. Jameson Thomas. This certifies that Jameson Thomas, age 10, was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on this, the fifth day of November, 2023, at New Hope First Baptist Church, 705 Nelson Street, Greenville, Mississippi, yours truly, Pastor. The meaning of baptism, know ye not that so many of us were, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Romans 6, 3 through 4. Well, we baptize you. We put you in, put you, both of y'all in the water. What does that mean? What it means is that when we put you down in the water, when those two deacons put you down in the water, that means that they were burying the old you. They were burying the old you. So when you come up out of the water, it means that you are a brand new creature, a brand new person in the Lord. That means all the things that you would have done that would be contrary to the law of God, or that were wrong or sinful, it means all those things are behind you. Everybody say amen. 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 And it's good to get some stuff behind you, ain't it? Amen. All of that is behind you. Come up out of the water, it means that you can step out and walk in a new way. And even if you make mistakes, and you will, 
as life goes on. But all you have to do is ask the Lord to forgive you, and he will, and continue to grow in grace. Amen. And I want you all to make a commitment to ask your parents to help you get to Sunday school. And we're going to make a special push to get our young people here on a, on a Sunday for Sunday school. Amen. Amen. We call it Sunday school because the school meets on a Sunday. Amen. It could be Tuesday school or Wednesday school, but it's Sunday school. Amen. And that's what we need. Amen. Jameson, this is your certificate. All right. And then here's the second certificate to Jurian. Jurian, here's your certificate. And it reads exactly the same. Amen. Amen. This is the right hand of fellowship. And what this means is that you are now part of this church, not only this church, but the churches all over the world because we're all one. We are one body in Christ. Amen. And these are uh, some gifts from the deaconess. These are Bibles. Here's your Bible. Here's your Bible. Amen. So cherish these Bibles as a word of God. Amen. And when you, when you start reading, and when you start reading, read, start reading like in the Gospels, like start reading in Matthew. Uh, me start reading there. That's pretty easy for you to uh, All right. We have done it. All right, Deaconess, come on. Let's let's shake their hand. And parents, come on. If you are here, grandparents, if you are here, you can come on around as well. Amen. Where are the, are the parents here? Right over here? Okay, come on. All right, my brother. You too slow down. <laughs> Beat it up. Beat it up. Hey. All right. Amen. Let's give our candidates a hand. Amen. Amen. We are kind of breaking protocol a little bit, but just, uh, let's keep it moving. Amen. I would that you would pause and let me get into the message, and I don't plan to be long. Amen. And uh, next time I'll be a little longer. Amen. See how quiet y'all got right there? Yeah. Amen. Oh, God, we thank you now for this preaching and this teaching time. We pray all your blessings upon us. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeeming. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen.
And amen. Won't you turn to uh, John, First John, First John, First John, Amen. Five verses one through five. John 5 verses 1 through 5. Amen. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his com commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Whoso is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about what a church should be. That's what I want to talk about all this month. What a church should be. Amen. I think that uh, we have gotten away from really knowing the true purpose of the church. We have gotten away from knowing what the true purpose of the church actually should be. Uh, the church is not a political organization. Although uh, we are concerned about government and those that are in leadership, but the church is not uh, a political organization. The church is not a social club where we just come and gather and swap words. It's not a social club like your fraternity, your sorority, or whatever club you might be about. It's not a place where we come and tailgate. Amen. Y'all missed y'all missed that day. Although we do we do eat around here. We do that. But we don't we don't it's not a place where we come to tailgate. Amen. But it is an organism. And an organism Move. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I say organism move. Yes, sir. You see, a church must always be on the move Amen. for the Lord. Amen. The church must never be doing the same thing over and over again. But the church should be on the move. And I should not be trying to block your progress. And you should not be trying to block my progress. But we all should be working together. When somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, I need your help with such and such a thing. I get in a hurry to see what I can do to move it along. And wherever you are in the church, your role should be to do whatever you can to help move things along. But we have gotten away from the concept of what the church was left here to do. And I'll get into my little feeble outline in a minute. But uh, you see, we're making the church be what we want it to be. 
You see, the church does not belong to the pastor. I'm, I'm only here because the Lord has placed me here, sanctioned by you, the people. Amen. Amen. That's the only reason why I'm up here. And the only reason why we should do anything for the Lord is because this is what the Lord has on his agenda. Amen. But now if we look at everything that the church should be, the church should be a place of teaching. Amen. Uh, the church should be a place of teaching. And a place of teaching, it should be a place of acceptance and application. You see, you know, the church is not a place where we screen the applicants. You know, if you were to join a fraternity or sorority, they screen all their applicants. They, they don't accept everybody that makes application. Some are rejected. Some are rejected because the, the inner group just don't like you. See, see how quiet you got right now? <coughs> if they don't want you in the organization, guess what? Your application will go in file 13. <laughs> but then what the church must be a place of acceptance. Amen. Well, regardless of your age, status, nationality, your financial means, <coughs> uh, you should be accepted by the church. Amen. You see, Amen. whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Yeah, whosoever will is a general statement in that we are not the one that does the choosing. The Lord is the one that does the choosing whosoever will. So it should be a place of teaching, a place of acceptance, a place of application. And in the terms of teaching, it should be a place of acceptance where we all agree to believe and follow the word of the Lord. And we all know that the Bible was written by holy men of God that were moved by the Holy Spirit. And it is a, a Bible is a, is a book not to be argued, but a book to be accepted. Amen. It's not a book to be argued, That's right. but a book to be accepted. Right. And then when we look at the teaching, we must understand its application. You see, I don't care how much medicine that your doctor may prescribe to you, the medicine won't do you any good unless you take it. All right, all right. And then upon your consumption, you must follow the directions. Yes. If you don't take it the right way, it could kill you. Yes. So if we're going to learn of the word, we must uh, be a student of its application. We must apply what we have learned. Amen. It, doesn't, it don't mean a thing that you can quote scriptures out the Bible. It don't mean a thing. Oh, right. Right. The devil can't quote scripture. He, he quoted the scripture to the Lord and he misquoted it while he was there in temptation. Amen. Amen. It, it is written. So what? What really matters is, can you and are you living according to what the Bible says? Amen. You don't make no difference how, how good you can quote it, how you can explain it, and all of that kind of stuff. Like and then when you leave, you get it zigging and zagging like everybody else. Like So in terms of the teaching, it must be a, a place, the church must be a place of acceptance, and it must be a place of application. application. 
When you, if you, you go to Sunday school, at the end of the lesson, it says application. In other words, if you sat there and you've listened to the lesson, you've listened to the discussion, then there is uh, application. What you going to do with it? What you're going to do about it. Yeah. And if you're not going to do anything with it or do anything about it, you've wasted your time. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. Just sitting there listening right. to the lesson. Yeah. The church must be a place of teaching. Yeah. And may I remind you that you that teach classes, I teach classes. But I'm really not the teacher. And you are not the teacher. You are just the teacher's aide trying to hold the classroom together until the teacher shows up. And that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. Because he knows everything. I'm limited. And you are limited in your knowledge of what the Bible says. I, as, as much, I, and I've got a doctorate, and I still don't know everything. I'm still learning, you see. So all of us cannot stand acting like we are the authority. No, no. We are all learning. And then, if I was a Stand up here and teach until my face turns blue and I fall flat. I still can't say it all because there's still more to be said. Amen. That's right. That's right. Teaching should be a place not only of teaching, but also be a place of training. Yes. Of training. My job is to, uh, to equip the saints uh, for the upbuilding of the body of Christ. My job is to help train you to do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. My job is not to grow new hope. That's not my job. My job is not to grow new hope. That job belongs to sheep. All right, sheep beget sheep. Yeah, all right. Your job is, after you have received the word of God, your job is, and my job is, is to make disciples. Amen. In other words, if, if you have been in a church and maybe some of you may not be members of this church, or you just may be visiting, but I want to ask you a question. If you've been in the church, how many people can you take a pen and a piece of paper and write their name down and say, I led these people to the Lord? How many names could you write down? How many names could you list? If you couldn't, if you can't, and if you couldn't list any names, you are not doing your job. Right, it's right. just that simple. Right. There are individuals in this church that I know personally have led others to the Lord, and the reason why they are here is because of their influence and discipleship. Right, and if you and I were to do our part, we would carry out the Lord's command to make disciples. Amen. Yes, that's right. Yeah, people in your neighborhood, they don't know a thing about the Lord. That's right. Amen. There are children in your neighborhood that they have not even known the true love of God. Amen. They're in your neighborhood. You pass by them every day. You see them every day. And they have not known the love of God. We are to be soldiers of the cross. Every soldier has to be trained. Every soldier has, they don't just 
put, put you in the army, give you a uniform, give you a gun, give you some shoes, and turn you loose. Oh, no, they don't do that. You go through what's called basic training. And you learn the fundamentals of what it means to be a soldier. And the first line of duty is you must respect authority. That's the first thing. You must respect authority and your superiors. And one of the problems that we have in the church, we do not respect authority, especially the word of the Lord. Some are volunteers and some have been just drafted. And when you are drafted, you can ask Paul, the Lord puts a whole lot on you when he drafts you. He made Paul write over two-thirds of the New Testament because he persecuted the church. He had a whole lot of responsibility. Not only did he make him write and have him to write two-thirds of the New Testament, he had him traveling all over the world establishing churches. He had a great responsibility because the Lord drafted him. Not only must it be a place where soldiers are trained, but it must be uh, a place of sacrifice. You got to give up something if you're gonna be in this race. You got to give up. You got to give up something. You know. That, you know. It's a whole lot of time I could be doing something else. But if I really want to excel and want the church to excel, there's going to be some sacrifice. And if you're going to be over a ministry, everybody say ministry. ministry. You're going to be over deacon ministry or, yeah. uh, or, or music ministry or whatever ministry you're going to, if you wanted to excel, you're going to have to make a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. It just ain't going to run itself. That's right. That's right. Huh? Mm-hmm. It, ain't going, it ain't going to run itself. And, and then y'all going to be, be mad at me when I say this. But anytime you got a town and you don't have, you can't find personnel to run your law enforcement and it's just running itself, you're going to have a whole lot of problems. Amen. Amen. You, you, if you want it to excel, you want your ministry to excel, you're going to Put in the time. Amen. Amen. Put in the time. Yes. Put in the time yes. to cause it to be Amen. what you want it to be. Amen. Hey, amen. Amen. Sacrifice. In other words, well, you've got to deny yourself. Deny yourself and, and, and let the Lord lead you uh, in all things that pertain to godliness. Amen. Then not only that, uh, must it be a place of teaching, a place of training, but it must be a place of travailing. In other words, we must toil in prayer. Uh, if I were to have a prayer meeting tomorrow night, I, I, I might, I might get maybe four or five people to show up, maybe. <laughs> we, we just, we just uh, don't have a yearning to travail in prayer. But we should be a people of prayer. Jesus said his house should be called a house of prayer. Praying is essential. Do you know before Jesus did anything of great significance, 
He didn't pat his hand and sing a song, but he was involved in prayer. You, you go home and study. Before he chose his disciples, he spent all night in prayer. Before he went to the cross in Gethsemane, he spent that time in prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus was a man of prayer. Our power comes through prayer. Our power comes through prayer. Well, you may say that heard me on here, Reverend, Reverend, I'm just not a person of a whole lot of words, but guess what? It doesn't take a whole lot of words to really be effective in your prayer life. If you don't believe it, ask Peter. When he was sinking, he just said, Lord, save me. And the Lord came to his rescue. Amen. You know, the Lord, he, he knows every word that's in the English language. Yes, so there ain't a word you can say to impress my Jesus. Uh -huh. So just say how you feel. Uh -huh. Just say what's on your heart, what's on your mind. Because sometimes when I get to where I'm at, I just say, Lord, where you at? I'm looking for you. <laughs> I need you to show up and do something about this. I'm tired of this. I'm sick of this. And long as we've been talking about it, you ought to be sick of it too. Now, what are you going to do about this? I'm your servant. I'm your, I'm your servant, and I'm out here struggling, and I'm... I'm looking for you to come to my rescue, and I need you to do something about it. I need you to, I need you to show up. And if you talk and be sincere, I didn't say, oh, Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the God who sits high. And, I, I, ain't, I ain't got time to go through all of that stuff. I ain't got time for that. And you don't have, the Lord is not impressed with all of that. Just say how you feel and say what you're facing, what you're dealing with. Whether well, it's an illness or whether it's a family situation, whether it's financial or whatever, it happens to be just laid on the table. It's laid on the table. And you see, won't the Lord show up and do something about it? But it must be a place of travailing in prayer, or uh, travailing in dealing with problems that we face, and the issues, and the issues of life. Yes, problems are the cause for so many people uh, stopping in the service of the Lord. When you give your life to the Lord, that's when the hell breaks loose. Yes. The devil after you because you following the Lord. Yes. If you wasn't following him, what are you going to mess with you for? He already got you. He's just going, right. he go, he going to somebody else. That's right. That's right. But then lastly, my last point is the church should be a place of togetherness. Amen. It should be a place of togetherness. A place where we truly are a family. Where we truly are a family. Now, uh, if you be honest with me, you've got some bad folks. Yes, you do. You got some terrible folk in your family. They curse. They drink. They may be on drugs. They may steal. But they still in your family. And in that same sense, in the family of God, there are those that have all kind of problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Some are more obvious than others. But they're still in the family. And we still must show our love and our concern for them because they are in the family. I got some folk in my family that when they said, the Reverend Dr. Kim, <laughs> and when they say that, they trying to get some out. <laughs> I know what it's all about. But you know, I, I mean, I just played it. I just, what is it? What, what is it? And you got some like that in your family too. They know, they know how to put some soap on your face. And when they do that, they're getting ready to shave you. See, you see how quiet you got right there? They know, they know, they know, they know how to make you feel like you're way up there. Am I, am I being real today? I'm just talking about what the church should be about. A place of family, but also it should be a place of faith. If any, any place should be exhibiting faith in God, it should be the church. You know, you should, we should be a people of faith, people that believe in the abiding principles of faith. And believe in salvation and that our Savior offers the solution to life's problem. If you don't believe that Jesus uh, has and offers the solution to life's problems, there goes your faith. If you don't have a job and you don't have faith that the Lord can open a door and, and that the Lord can make a way for you. And then again, we have got to uh, learn how to intercede for other people. Yeah. You know, you you know, just you know, it may be a young man or young couple, you know, that are that they are unemployed, and you know what they are, their skills are, their skill set is. The church should be a place where uh, it can be a, a network of individuals uh, that have their influence that can cause two individuals that are unemployed to become employed. Do y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The church should be not just a place where we come to congregate, to clap, to sing, to preach, and do all of those other things. Yes, we should do that, but we should do so much more in order to meet the needs of people that are struggling and that are in need of some help. Let me go back to this, and I'm going to be, in, be through in a minute. If you got this couple, for example, let's, let's stay looking or this person that's looking for a job, they're unemployed, and you know uh, somebody in town, you know the mayor, you know the supervisor, you, you know the powers that be, and you on speaking terms, you got, you got them on speed dial. Well, you doing all that talking, what have you doing? Well, I have done it. I have picked up the phone. And say, look, I got so-and-so, so-and-so, and they're looking for this job. And you got this thing available. And I'm not trying to make you do anything. But will you give this person some consideration? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor, I'll tell you what you do. You, you, you tell them to fax the application in, and, and I will give it some consideration. Guess what? They hired them the same day. Now, everybody in here, you have influence. Amen. You may not think you got influence, but you have influence. Amen. But now, I ain't going to stand up for somebody that's raggedy, ain't going to do nothing, right. and you're going to make me look bad. I ain't going to help you do nothing. Amen. You 
get there on the job, you mess up, you steal, yeah. you, you won't come to, you come late and leave early. I'm, I'm not going to put my neck out on the line for you for that. But if you got the right heart and you're trying to do what's right, the church should be a network where it ministers to the whole man. Why don't you say amen? amen. And then my last, my last point is not only should it be a place of family, a place of faith, but it should be a place of fruit. Amen. In other words, by their fruit you shall know them. There ought to be a whole lot of fruit on this tree. I say there ought to be a whole lot of fruit on this tree. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Don't nobody say I was too long because we didn't start on time. Amen. Amen. We extend the invitation today. If you, you're here today and you have not accepted Christ and you want to leave here today a brand new person and you say, Lord, come into my life and make me brand new. Give me a new start. Give me a new mind to serve you. Regardless of your age, you can be saved today. And what does it mean to be saved? Being saved means that you out from under condemnation and you're free because you're no longer in conflict against God but now you have become reconciled and you realize that you need him in your life and I don't care how much money you got in the bank you need the Lord when you're sick and down on your back, and you can't do nothing for yourself. If you got $5 million in the bank, it won't do you any good. But when you have Jesus, you have all that you need. As we stand on our feet today, let's, let's just stand. Thank you for the home from which they have come. Bless these, your people, as we leave and go our separate ways. And to these ends, we give you all of the praise and all of the glory. It's in the strong and in the perfect name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, and the fellowship of Jesus Christ be with one and all until we meet again. Let us all say together, Amen.
but you understand it in there, right? Got a cut in his head, he keep an arrow off. Right? Yeah, you know he don't do that. He ain't never did that before. But that what it is. He got a, he got a bad cut in his head. He been wearing it all week. I ain't asked him. I don't know if it's from uh, an infection from the clippers or getting a haircut or something hit him in the head. I ain't asked him. I ain't asked him. 